Giant ranch lawyers roam the earth for hundreds and thousands of years. For well over 50 years, these magnificent creatures are kept as pets of admiration by enthusiasts around the world. So in this episode, we will shine some light about the beauty of these mostly misunderstood creatures and why they are great pets. When thinking about giant tarantulas, you mostly have images of brown or black spiders present in your head. There is nothing wrong with it. Quite a few of these biggest tarantulas on the planet have a simple brown or darkish coloration in general, so they can better camouflage on the forest floor. The striking star-shaped markings on the carapace the head of the spider where their eyes are located are out of this world. Like this juvenile specimen of Xenestis, as in this case an unknown to science species called Megascopula, has already some purplish coloration present on its femurs. In combination with the striking red and orange hairs on the spider's body, called Opistosoma, it is surely a giant tarantula with some colors not many people outside of our world of tarantula enthusiasts know about. So the next specimen misses some of these spiky hairs on the abdomen. It looks quite bald, but this is nothing to worry about. All members of the subfamily Trevosinae, a group of tarantulas native to the Americas, have urticating hairs present on their abdomen. So when they are disturbed, they have the ability to flick these hairs with their leg away from their abdomen to the direction where the potential predator is present. And as with all Xenestis, they tend to use these urticating hairs very often, especially in young age, which results in such bald abdomens quite fast. So typical Xenestis defense posture here are spread out legs, mostly raised hind legs and their abdomen put straight in the air, making it appear bigger to the potential predator. There will be no overlay in the video, so please make sure you leave a comment down below and click the like button on the video, so yeah, we can get this whole YouTube algorithm going and other people out there are able to enjoy our awesome video material, including some very nice to have information regarding Xenestis and other giant tarantulas in the pet trade and their natural history data. Officially, there are only three different species of Xenestis described. There is Xenestis imanis, Xenestis monstrosa from Colombia, and of course Xenestis intermedia from Venezuela. So in the last 20 years, tarantula enthusiasts have found some additional new species from the genus Xenestis. So these new species of Xenestis are not yet described, but the revision is on the way and hopefully we can enjoy these results somewhere in 2022. As with this adult male of Xenestis imanis, you can clearly see that there are spikes present on its legs and also in previous shots or in upcoming shots you are able to see that these species of Xenestis, as with other members of the genus Xenestis, do have tibia apophysis which helps them when they mate with a female so can make sure that they hook up their chelicera of their female counterpart during the mating ritual. So the genus Xenestis is a little exception here, while other members of the South American giant tarantulas have colorful major males, such as Pamphobiteus for example, the members of the genus Xenestis remain most of its coloration also in adult females.
So this old Xanestis imanis species is a completely black tarantula in old age especially. We have documented this species in nature, so if you want to learn more about Xanestis imanis, Xanestis species white or Xanestis species blue, you better off check our other videos on the channel. There are quite a few of them covering their natural history in the wild. So we are now starting introducing the adult male to the adult female, of course, and try to mate him. It is crucial to the tarantula hobby that species like this will be bred by enthusiasts like we all are and that there's no necessity to actually collect tarantulas in the wild. So unlike species and specimens from like Afonopelma semani or Gramostola rosea which heavily relied and still rely on wild caught specimens these Xenestis species, including Xenestis imanis, you can see on the screen right now, are bred very successful for well over 20 years in captivity. And that means that we do have to continue that, so we make sure that everyone out there who would like to get a pet tarantula with these amazing colorations will have the ability to do so without harming the tarantulas in their native habitat. To my knowledge, this adult female previously built a exact before when she was in the hands of another owner a few years back, so we're quite hopeful that a potential mating will result in a healthy exec. Xenestis imanis is when paired correctly and you do have the correct counterpart found from the same population, very friendly in their mating ritual and therefore you don't have to fear for a loss of your adult male. So the female is usually, when well fed of course, uh, not that angry towards the male. Nevertheless, always be ready as a tarantula keeper to interfere when it's needed. Xenestis species white, Xenestis species blue, species Megascopula or Megazetae are the names of these yet undescribed species of Xenestis which hopefully in the future will be properly diagnosed and described making the life of every hobbyist way easier. So after this successful mating of Xenestis imanis, the female walks back into her burrow and there she will reside and wait for some prey to walk by. So this will actually be our responsibility to feed the specimen so that she will be able to produce eggs and later on produce an egg sac, which will result hopefully in between 25 and up to 70 young specimens of Xenestis imanis. <laughs> 